Good morning, everybody. This is Monica Bessem, and I'm doing my presentation on Raymond Lull, or Ramon Lull. He was a controversial um, Arabic language specialist in the conversion, and his hope was to convert the Muslims by using their own language. Ramon Lull was born in 1232 or 1235. There is a debate on his age. But at the time that he was born, the Moorish powers had only been vanquished for two years. The population um, was still Moors, being the Muslim inhabitants, and would later adopt the name Arabs. This left most of the population still Jewish and a third remaining Moors. Lull was born into a very prominent family. His father had fought for James the Conqueror in 1229 and became a titled and landed um, man of service there. Because of his father's service, there was already a familial history with crusading and belief that there should be ha um, help in this conversion. But Lowell was not there in his own right yet. Because he was raised in wealth and he had great connections to royalty, he was able to marry a woman of prominence. Her name was Bianca Picani. She was the cousin of King James II. He was notorious for poetry and travel, and because of his poetry and travel, he had many muses, which led him to philandering, and it would take him away from home quite often. All of a sudden, he has this impactful moment where in 1263, he re receives visions of Jesus Christ crucified. These visions come to him in a very ominous way because it is the crucifixion, and he will have the visions five times. Once he has these visions, it leads him on a great pilgrimage um, in 1265 of studying and learning and traveling. And he will go to Barcelona, where he will meet with the canonical um, laws creator of Raymond Pennyfort. Now, Raymond Pennyfort is very prominent in uh, the canonical laws as that author. And it is something that the Roman Catholic Church actually adhered to until 1917. So it, it was a very ancient belief all the way to forward that he, he did impose um, his canonical laws. He talks with many other priests and pastors and religious scholars, and rather than leaving for Paris, he is convinced to go create his own vocation because his heart is in a different place because of being in Mallorca and being um, near the Arabs. He decides he will go home. In this right, he decides to purchase himself a moor, which is the Muslim slave, or also known as an Arab. They are often of African descent, um, and that's why the term more. This will be how he learns the language, um, the Arabic language. It will be the focus of his conversion and in helping the Crusades convert Muslims. Latin is the preferred language. So many people looked down on Lowell for, for not learning Latin. He was thought to be... Um, less than as far as a religious scholar would go. He goes off to try to teach later on in life. He is laughed out of the classroom because he does not know Latin, but he is able to overcome this later on in life, and you'll see why. But at the time, because he is not able to speak Latin, he's not, he's not in the university setting looked as a religious scholar. They don't want the converts to know Latin in a necessary sense, but they want the priests and the pastors to know Latin. And we, we saw that many times as a power struggle. The slave then becomes his teacher and he teaches him for nine years. No name of his slave is actually mentioned. They just often re refer to him as a slave or the Moor. At this time, he is able to write his first publication, which is the Book of Contemplation in, 19, or in 1274, not 1974, sorry. And then after this time, there is obviously some sort of breakdown of the relationship between his slave and himself, where the slave attempts to kill Lowell. In this attempt to kill Lowell, he is um, imprisoned and arrested. And while in prison, he decides to commit suicide. Because of this situation, Lowell goes into a spiraling depression and has a nervous breakdown. It will become kind of a paramount moment in his life because... You know, it's like the, the slave was his teacher. He has now lost this person who is a huge role in his life. I'm sure the slave did not feel that way. And he is actually deemed incapable of taking care of his estate. His wife becomes basically his power of attorney. 
and he is not allowed to be on a state or run it. He is given a very small role. That would be a huge issue for most men that are titled to lose that position. Lowell takes this and becomes kind of a hermit and seeks out more writing and creating at this time. And while he's doing that, there is a new change in the regime. And so King James II of Majorca needs a win. He needs to get the, the civil unrest of his country and the wars that are going on to end. So he wants to bring a focus on religion. So he will go ahead and try to create his own religious setting because Peter II and him are divided. And if he looks like the higher authority of religion, this should be a good thing for him. So prior to any attempts of conversion to the Muslims in Granada, they create this monastery. It is a Franciscan monastery um, that Ramon Lowell opens and operates under the guise of King James II. It is a beautiful location that is um, shown here on the right bottom corner. It is called Miramar. And it will be a specialized monastery where only 13 monks are taken in where they can read and study and write in Arabic. Because they are Franciscan, the Dominicans do not agree with the fact that they are actually doing um, this Arabic learning and not learning Latin again becomes an issue. While he's on this study, he also moves forward in learning other things, philosophy, astrology, and he is reportedly looked down on because of this. Lowell will go on to the geometric study of Muslim beliefs and their patterns. He devises his own pattern system to follow the guise of a Christian belief. This is in the top um, left corner here, and you'll see the geometric pattern with these letters on the outside. On the bottom is a key of what he means by that, and it is very hard to understand, but he also says that he never was able to convert anybody based on this. He will go through his art, sorry, and, and he will claim that he never converted anybody from this, but it is just essentially a way for him to understand more of God's creation. He does not believe that his geometric patterns can solve the world's problems or illuminate to God's creation any more than just merely um, agreeing with what God created and appreciating what God created. Lowell had come up with his own three-point plan, and he seems to have succeeded greatly in what he did. He first needed to learn Arabic and other language used by the Muslims in order to help convert them or coexist with them. Lowell was very adamant that if a Muslim person did not convert, it didn't mean that they were wrong and that he could not live with them. He wasn't going to kill them like many Christian crusaders did, where they enslaved them or killed them. He was okay with uh, them understanding his God and he understanding their God. Second, he studied the Islamic literature in order to develop a Christian apologetic in response to Muslim arguments. This, once again, is just to go deeper into their understanding as well as his in coexistence. And third, he desired to give his life as a martyr among the Muslims so that they could see that he honorably was in their presence and trying to convert them on behalf of God, but not to deem them unworthy of Christ's love. Sorry. So Lowell goes to Africa and in, in Boogie, Africa in 1307, he is imprisoned for six months. Um, for trying to convert Muslims, and he is kind of looked at as an enemy. Um, They're kind of watching him seen, and he's looked at an enemy. So as at the age of 83, well in Africa, Lowell was stoned and became a martyr for the faith, which was his ultimate goal. This is the picture here on the right. He was stoned to death by a group of, of people that did not like what he was saying. I don't know what the script is over his head, um, as that is in Castilian. Um, in the first book that he wrote, The Contemplation of God, this is his quote, O Lord, thy servant and subject has very great fear of dying a natural death, for he would prefer his death to be noblest, that is, namely, death for thy love. And so I feel that Ramon Lowell was one of the greatest um, authors and proponents of the Muslim conversion during the Crusades. 
he was there in Africa and Mallorca and all these places really trying to do things prior to anybody else going and crusading there. His version of crusading was not by force, but by love. And there is actually universities named after him in Mallorca. And there are many studies of his writings and teachings. I hope you guys enjoyed this and good luck to everybody else in their finals.